himself getting patched by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and Approaches dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Push more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. Is now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like dropping. He's not on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of have fun. Yeah. It's um, all about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still such up. He's such a second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the iFormula League season, season 7. And it is now the Super Formula Light Series here on the JPB YouTube channel. I am James Parker, going to be joined by Bradley Dalton in the booth with me alongside very, very shortly. And, well, I think it's going to be an interesting one. We are at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Canada. 4.31 kilometers in length. And 14 turns, including the Wall of Champions. Let's keep you up to date with the scores on the doors at the moment. In the pro standings, Christian Glamseed are out in front on 239 with Mackenzie Rune on 198. Marion Barbaro on 193 with Robert Ridgway on 179. Andrew Adrian Calaseed on 165. Ian Lance on 163 with Scott Barton on 146. Alexander Rivera on 140. Timothy Nelson on 110. Then James Malera on 105. Then Solano, Gianluca Iliano and Fred Patrick Larson in that top 13. In the AM standings at the moment, it is Rachel Jimenez out in front with Mateus Balcar in second. Anthony Serrano on 166, not too far back. Only 14 points separate the top three. Alexander Shana in fourth. Alex Hinchcliffe in fifth. Alexander Sinko in sixth. Patrick Metrovic in seventh with Jack Clark in eighth. Then Hans Junker, Corey Buchanan, Carlos Navarro, John Journey, Nicholas Marshall, Jeremy Dome, and Curtis Rogers has not yet uh, made an appearance. In the overall team standings at the moment, Intend Get Good Sim Racing out in front on 556 with Lumos Emotorsport on 4085. Knox Emotorsport on 424 with Junker Racing on 337. Then Nelco Esports on 276. No Limit Sim Racing on 239. Intend Sim Racing on 222. Octane Outlaws on 151. Then Valve Esports, Maxwell Racing Team, Intend Flat Out Sim Racing. And then Wolfpack Racing around out the, the, the 12 teams. Let's bring Brad into the booth as we're just coming towards the end of qualifying. Bring him in a very, very very quickly brad welcome in buddy how are you i'm doing good james good evening good afternoon everyone it is a nice nice day in montreal here uh looking at circuit you'll know of the canadian track the wall of champions i mean this is this is one of those staple f1 tracks that i feel like you need to be comfortable putting a lap down on it's got some twisty bits it's got some fun bits it's got long straightaways broken up by a chicane i mean it's kind of a classic formula track so all of the drivers should be fairly comfortable here running through and um we should see some competitive racing with 14 cars on yeah i think so as well and the wall of champions is always the big one who's going to make it through without hitting the wall who's going to be able to get there you know they've got 35 laps here today and it's going to be vitally important one of the things i think though brad is survival they've got to look at surviving this race because it's a good opportunity for points. It's not a massive field, but it's not a low field. It's kind of in that middle mark. Yeah, it's definitely going to set things up where we could see some big breakout names up towards the front and see something come up. Of course, Christian Glamseed are not running today um, with it being Easter Sunday. And I believe he said that he was at another event or had something going on today um so you know we're seeing a lot of names that could be in that we don't normally see and um i think it could mix things up and make for an interesting grid here of course as we go into the five minute warm-up session yeah it's looking like we're not going to be hitting rain i don't think there's going to be rain in montreal the prospective weather is 65 degrees uh, um, 65 degrees fahrenheit rain is unlikely uh chance of rain is only 16 percent so if we do see rain it will be quite a miracle but looking like it's not going to be raining now if i speak to our lovely co-commentator kenneth sportak who is in canada at this moment in time and if i spoke to him he's probably going to tell me he's had about another four foot of snow which he seems to tell me every tuesday oh we only had three foot this week he goes or we only had four foot this week or whatever 
big. We only had minus 40 degrees, and I'm just sitting there thinking, Jesus whiz, Batman. I am sitting here freezing when it's only nine degrees, and he's sitting there in four foot of snow. <laughs> I, we've had very up and down, back and forth weather here where I am at in the U.S. We, we went from 25 degrees Fahrenheit to highs of 75 degrees Fahrenheit and everything in between, so I, I can't really say anything i wish we got more snow here though i i probably wouldn't mind living in canada i i like the snow but uh that's not something that's typical for people in my neck of the woods to say no that's the thing right in the uk we barely get snow we had a little um sprinkle it was almost like somebody you know topped a cake with some little sprinkle dust that was about as much snow as we got so we made the final decision in the parfit household we were like right as it hasn't snowed this Christmas, we're going to Norway. So that's the plan for the Parfait household. Now, if anybody doesn't know, JPB shuts down generally for two weeks over Christmas. Um, we take a bit of a break due to the well-earned break, and we spend it lovely with our families and doing stuff like that. So we, we are off to Norway to introduce the children to snow on Christmas Day um, because they've never had it. They've never seen it over here, and... and that's one of the things that we felt would give them a little bit of an experience to go out and experience the snow in that sort of manner. Yeah, see, I remember, I'm going to just sound crazy, but I remember when I was growing up, snow was a big deal. And when we got snow, you know, it was a nice snow day. There was no school. Get the sled out, sled down the hill, have a lot of fun and enjoy it. And now it feels like there's hardly ever snow. And even when there is snow, you know, as an adult, you don't get days off. I still have to go to work. I'm still expected to show up. Um, even in my neck of the woods, they've introduced something. Uh, I don't even know what they call it, but it's like alternative school days. So if the kids, you know, can't make it to school because the buses can't get out, every kid in my town has a laptop that the school issues them, like a, like a MacBook or a Chrome tablet, whatever it may be. And they're expected to get online and get on Zoom calls and do classwork from home. Like, snow nowadays doesn't have that same no. pizzazz to it, James, as it was, you know, when I was younger. And mm. granted, I don't feel that old, but it just, it doesn't anymore. I, I like one of the things you said, I grabbed the sled. Now, in the UK, it was grab the tea tray or whatever you could find if you didn't have a sled. However, I do recommend not going down a snowy hill with a black bag tucked up underneath you because it was no friction. Because you hit a stone... Your bum definitely knew about it. Let's put it that way. So I do suggest not going down on a tea tray. Oh, well, actually more in a black bag than a tea tray, to be fair. And I had seen it a few times, do we say. Some of my friends and, and myself did end up having to have bruises on our bottoms on when we hit snow because we decided it was better on a black bag. Don't do that. Go and buy a sled from a shop, okay? Um, it would be less dangerous yourself. <laughs> We are in to the five-minute warm-up. We're going to bring you up the grid once this is done, and we will get this one underway. 35 laps, Brad. Where are we expecting the action to be? Uh, 35 laps. You've got a lot of really good drivers. I think action is going to be towards the front. I think it's going to be a fairly competitive field with similar, similar pace, and mm -hmm. it should set us up for a nice long run. Um, I think really the question is going to be who pits when. Um, of course, as we're running the super formulas and not the F3 cars, these cars can go a bit longer on fuel. So I don't know exactly when to expect pit stops. I'd say probably about lap 25 or so. And then we'll see how people go for that last 10 lap shootout. Absolutely. I do. I think you are going to be about on the money there. So I really do. It's going to be very up and down on when they're going to get in. But let's get bring you up the grid. Mackenzie Rune is on the top stop, the top spot, I should say, with Robert Ridgway in second and Scott Barton in third. Timothy Nielsen fourth, Victor Solano in fifth, Marion Barbaro in sixth, Adrian Colasid in seventh, with Rachel Jimenez in eighth, Ian Lance ninth, Eric, Mag Mag Eric Magnuson, excuse me, as I get my teeth mixed up, in tenth, with Alex Chinchcliffe and Alexander Sharna is in your top 12 rolling on from that we've got nicholas marshall and jack clark are here for this one and let's see how they get on car numbers do represent 
their positions as well and obviously their classes if there's an O right in front of them they are in the AMs you can see the bottom guys and Rachel Jimenez but the lights are going to be coming on for the opening lap of the Super Formula Lights at Canada at Circuit Shield Villeneuve and we are green, green, green with Mackenzie Rune taking the whole shot down into turn one. Robert Ridgway tucked in second, Victor Solano third. Scott Barton got a very slow start and now he is being pushed out of the line he needs to be as he starts running down in through turn one and out through down into three and four and unfortunately Barton lost two at the start sitting in fifth place at the moment. Marion Barbaro behind in sixth. Jimenez up for one place. Rachel Jimenez from that E. The Lumos E Motorsports team sitting in seventh on the run down now into turn six and seven. Good start there, Brad. No real major dramas for anyone, and they got underway quite quickly. Yeah, everything went through. Scott Martin was a bit easier there. He had a great start down to the place early on with Victor Solano. Maybe he was a bit of a P3. No big dramas, nothing crazy caught my attention there, and it's a good way to kick off lap 135 as we run down. Here towards this sharp right hander that was one of many passing opportunities. We'll get us down a long, long back stretch here as we continue through. You're going to see a little bit of action there. Back behind Rachel Jimenez. You saw someone thinking about a pass there. I believe that was Magnuson. who yep. thought about a dive up the inside there, but wasn't able to make something stick. As we get lap one, we get this long, long, call it a back straight, call it a main straight, call it a straightaway, whatever you want to call it this run down towards the wall of champions and i worry the wall of champions will take someone out if they don't respect it and they don't be careful or long oh. to the game for the end of lap one james and all the wall of champions oh ear lungs he went in so much faster than magnuson they almost ended up joining the back end of magnuson oh there's a spinner there as well alex hitchcliffe Unfortunately, goes well on for the Maxwell Racing team. Hinchcliffe goes round at the beginning. Victor Solano also had a moment once again. And unfortunately for Victor, he has now gone round right at the beginning. Comes in to the corner. It's hard on the brakes. Is it going to come round and bite him? It has. And unfortunately, he's done some lovely pirouettes and got back up and away. But Alex Hinchcliffe losing the car altogether there and going down into turn one. Unfortunate for him. And Mackenzie Roon, um, well, done what Mackenzie Roon needs to do. Opened up a gap of 1.55 seconds over Robert Ridgeway and Nelson with Barton there in fourth. Yeah, Mackenzie Roon just needs to kind of wipe the hands off and just run nice, consistent laps for the rest of this race. You've got the 1.5, 1.6 second gap. You need to just keep your pace together. Keep things moving as we go. Really, Robert Ridgeway is the one that needs to turn it up and find the pressure here because Robert Ridgway is the one that is losing time by a pretty significant margin as we go through almost a second pace difference on just lap one between those two oh. so we'll see how things go through as the wall of champions I think is going to be the big problem as we go through look at that lots of changes happening going on to the main street. Yeah, Nelson lost it. Ridgeway nearly ended up in the wall. He's hit the curb on the entry. He nearly got himself in trouble. There's Magnuson has just gone and... Whoa! Oh. Magnuson has done that. What has happened here? So that's Hinchcliffe going on at the beginning. What happened to Jack Clark as he's coming down into turn number 10? Is he just going to power, apply the power too early and going to spin that car up? He is. Yep. What about Marion Barbaro? What did he get up to as he's coming down into turn 13 and 14? Has he hit the wall? Oh, yes. Ow. And then he's trying to get out of the way. There's nowhere for Barbaro to go. Oh, my dearie me. Ouch. The word on that one, I think. Ouch is the word. Ouch is very much the word there, because that has uh, mixed things up quite a bit, opened things up a bit. So, um, Adrian Colosi, currently the closest battle on track to Victor Solano um, as we run here down the back stretch again. The Wall of Champions, I think, is going to be really what decides the winner of this 35 lap race because it seems like every driver's gonna have at least one impact with that wall uh all bar mckenzie rune because look at that sausage on the inside yeah solano caught it on the exit he's just lost a place there the victor solano needed to be a little bit more careful they've got to stay off the curb 
that's the problem on the entry. If you're going to try and bounce the car like it's a TCR, you are going to be in trouble because, let me remind you, it's not a TCR. They're going to be in serious trouble if they think they can take that inside curb like a TCR. It's just not going to bounce. It's going to lift you in the air. Four wheels in a super formula car, no grip. Good night, Vienna. Thank you very much. And you sign your name on the wall. Yeah, and it's just a case of, I think some of it is the drivers are trying to extract as much pace as possible, and they're really just trying to push themselves a little too much as we go here. This is coming out of turns eight and nine right now, Victor Solano still trying to chase down Colise. Keep your eye on Scott Barton. Scott Barton last lap. It's about half seven tenths of a second faster than Mackenzie Rune, so keep your eyes on those front two. I have a feeling that that is going to be a very nip and tuck back and forth battle as we watch, but Really right now it is Solano and Colas in the closest battle on track. And then Ian Lance and Rachel Jimenez that are fairly close. And these are all drivers just going down the back stretch now. And again, we see Chicane here watch the sausage curb, and that is a good way to run through. How close to the wall do you dare get though? Well, Al, Al, oh, that was uh, that was Solano. That is gonna be a big old slowdown unless he can't get rid of that. Coming down into turn one. Al Nasir, they're just flirting with the ball. Let them have their fun. Hmm. Explain that one to Barrio Barbaro, who, um, well, did a little bit more than flirting, should we say. If he was in a relationship, he would be single about that. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately for him, it wasn't flirting. It was, you are way too close. And Rachel Jimenez in that amazing livery machine has just cleared Solano, who's still trying to take off the slowdown that he got earlier on. Didn't manage to take it off. Ian Lance has got through once more. They're on their run through turn six and seven. Down into eight and nine they go. They've got to be more and more careful because it is going to get more and more difficult. Canada does have slowdowns and they are potent if you cannot get this course right. It's about being fast. It's about being accurate. And it's about keeping your car out of that wall. That's the problem. As it, Jimenez is showing you there as well, which looks like she has also just got to slow down for that one. Yeah, Rachel Jimenez very much having to slow down there, probably due to track limits, as we said, James, because track limits can be the uh, deciding factor in any mm -hmm. race, especially if you don't keep your head on your shoulders and really pay attention. You've got to respect the white lines. I racing uh, is not the real life oh. where you can get away with watching. Oh, there's oh, another one. Oh, oh. man. Got to be is, careful there. Yeah, that's Victor Solano again, I believe, who's just got himself in another slowdown. He did not get the car stopped, and off he goes once more onto the side of the circuit. Timothy Nelson here with Robert Ridgway. Ridgway giving Nelson all sorts of grief now as they're battling it out. We are side by side, and we're on board with Ridgway. Nelson tries to... Man, either, uh -huh. either go or don't go or, well, or just do that, I suppose. That's also one way of looking at it, as Nielsen looks like he's just went off track and hasn't come back on at all. He's still sat in, nope, he's jumped back to the pits as Nielsen. So, unfortunately, whatever went on there must have been technical. Yeah, and it's, I, it's unfortunate to see a race end like that, you know, on lap six of 35, but, you know, you have the same things happen in real life. Max Verstappen losing out uh, in Australia due to what was probably a tiny gasket failure on a brake line. Um, you know, in sim, you don't have those moments of, you know, a tiny random gasket breaking, mm. but, you know, there's a number of things it could be. It could be the internet. It could be your rig not working the way you want. It could be you mismapped a control and you just can't bear it. There's tons of things that can affect your race on a level with sim racing. Um, given the, you know, controversial opinion, James, I would like to see mechanical failures introduced. Mm -hmm. I agree. If we're going to call it a simulator, and we, we, there was this debate this morning, actually, with um, a lovely Australian who was just commentating alongside me, Scotty Rankin, and literally the YouTube chat went mental. It was just full on. It's a sim. It's a game. It's a sim game. It's. I was just going. It's a game, guys. It's a game. We are quite far off the real life. Like Scotty turned and he said, 
but you don't have a tow truck coming out pulling your car back, do you? No, you can repair your car in a second when we give you a fast repair. <laughs> and it was just all of this going off. It was, um, it was absolutely mental. Um, but yeah, th there was no final definition to be honest with you, as it never is. It's either game or sim, whatever you want to call it. Me personally, I think it's a game all day, but there you go. I'm one of the masses that think that. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why you call it a simulator. We see Victor Solano finding his way up the inside here. This is through turn 10, and Victor Solano up the inside there of Rachel Jimenez and getting the pass done for P6. I, I can kind of lean either way. For me, it just genuinely depends on how you set up, how you set up iRacing or whatever software you've decided to race on. You know, unless it's a Formula One game, then those are 100% just games. I can't call them a simulator for any reason. Um, I racing, I think, does some of the best leaning towards trying to simulate real life tire wear, temperatures, track evolution, etc. Um, plus, everything being laser scanned helps a lot, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but there are other games that do certain things better. Like I said, of course, a competition, I think, does really, really good in the graphics and the weather department. Even if the handling isn't as realistic, I think uh, R Factor 2, there's certain things with R Factor 2 that it does really well, even if it has, you know, it's. You know, the modded scene there. is but massive. That's the thing in R Factor 2, isn't it? The modded, modded scene yeah, is absolutely and... huge, as we're going to watch Ian Lance do something crazy in that Lumos E Motorsports machine. Did he get it stopped at the hairpin? No, he did not. And unfortunately yeah, for him. Yeah, curb on the inside again, and he has gone round. Yeah, the modded scene in our factor is unbelievable. And if you haven't watched the 64s from the CMS check there, go and have a look um, from yesterday. It was absolutely insane, even if it did end in a very controversial manner. Oh, there it is mostly realistic game with unrealistic features that make it fun and playable for the non-professionals, like fast repairs, as you said. Ow! That is the most diplomatic answer I have ever seen come back at me when I've called it a game. Literally. Well done to you, sir. Um, and I will take a picture and I will post it on social media. But that is just the most diplomatic answer I have ever had. And, funny enough, I agree with you. Um, to be honest with you, these cars are getting a little bit more spread out. Nicholas Marshall is in front for the Wolfpack Racing with Ian, with Ian Lance in eighth spot trying to chase him down at the moment so we'll keep an eye on that battle but again what al says it in youtube chat is, is exactly right yeah i mean and that's the thing that you have to acknowledge is that these are never going to be true simulators like what we see professional drivers run on this is this is going to be the closest that we as non-professional racers can really get now are there are aspects you know like max verstappen runs you know has a heavy investment in high racing and sim racing um, jimmy broadbent is a driver that comes to mind you know he's running the 24 hours of nurburgring with gt4s and he got his up and coming in sim racing there are transferable things but i think at the end of the day you have to understand this is as realistic of a video game as we can get but they're still going to add things in to try to make it more accessible for everyone. Not everyone wants to have that super sweaty sim experience. I think of it with flight sims. You know, you've got Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where you have study level simulator planes like 737s that you have to know all of the fail-safe procedures with built-in service failures. That's the stuff I like to fly. But some people just want to get in a Cessna 135 and just go fly and have fun. Yeah, you can see Nicholas Marshall just lose that place. The problem is, sir, uh, not only did you lose the place, you didn't even take the racing line behind him. You've tightened it up, but now you've lost even more time coming borderline seven tenths over one corner. As soon as you knew that Lance was going to get through, that should have been a lift slotting behind him and to retake the line because the line is all a little bit peak tongue. From Nicholas, you need to open it up, go left a lot more. You can go left, there you go, out to the line, bring it in, run it up against the wall, use as much. You know, you've got about two foot the other side you can use. Come in, close the wall up, you're too far away from there. Onto the brakes now, lock it up, take the apex, there you go, swing it out, bring it back in, there you go, let it run, let it run. You've got loads of track to run. So much time being lost, um, just not using the boundaries of, that's given to you. Yeah, you've got to be brave. 
You've got to be brave. Because yeah. he had two foot to the right then to use to the wall. And I don't get me wrong, I'm no expert, right? But I have watched thousands upon thousands of races and I've done thousands, well into the probably the thousand broadcast situation now. You're not letting it run out. Let it run out to the left. Keep your wheels straight or as best to degrees as you can and run out and just that allows you to put the power on it don't it will allow you to keep the power you know on and get it on earlier and be able to maintain the speed because that's what he's got to do take it let it run there you go you've got about a probably be another half a foot that you could let it run there as well so it's you know there's so much more time that nick can find here on this circuit if he's just brave enough to allow it to be. We missed the apex by two foot that side. You know, we're on it here, but go out. Don't tighten it up. Too much time. Too much time on the table. Yeah, and I think I, some of it might be a tire fuel strategy. I, I don't think so, though. I think some of it is just general track knowledge and comfort. Comfort with the car, comfort with the track, and just comfortable with the way you've got to drive. Because you can ride on board right here with Victor Solano. And you can see the difference in what we were just watching there versus how Victor Solano is running now. You can see the difference in how they're hitting the apexes, how they're taking the corners. Look at how Victor Solano is going to slot in here into the back of Adrian Colosi who goes through. I mean, that is that is the difference, and that's the thing. These formula cars are all about using every millimeter of available track, available distance, available curb, whatever you have available to use, you've got to use it. Yeah, Solano's just passed Colosi that. See, that did see the difference. Colisey knew it was done, slipped in behind, retook the line. Yeah, my, yeah Lance has unfortunately lost that position again um, with Nick Marshall. I'll have a look and see what he got himself up to. He was up to something again, not very far apart. But now you can see here, Lance is going to go. So stay where you are, take your line, run it to the wall. To the wall. Again, probably two feet out. Um, it's, it's a scary to use all the track when it's surrounded by wall speed. Yeah, I know. That's why you, a lot of it is bravery. But if you're not hitting your marks, you're not in a position to run. Like now, don't tighten that up. Go. Just let it run out. Get the power on. It will stick. It will. I promise you, it will stay where you need to be if you've given it the time to settle and you've given it the... the necessary comfort you know we talk about this netflix chill with a car and i spoke about it brad with with the amg merc we did a, in a broadcast a couple of weeks ago with the vwsc and this is the same thing but if you treat her nice she'll reward you if you let her settle down once you've bounced it over the curbs you can run it out now head out there you know, you can get all of these things done. And Ian Lance is looking like he's a master of his own destiny at the moment. And he's trying to kill his own race here because he's just got another slowdown going through that last chicane. Again, be right out there. I don't know. Driver training for James. Me. James, I'm so convinced you could be a driver coach if uh, you ever wanted to give up the broadcasting career. You could be a driver coach and do pretty well. I just done too much. I, 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 the problem is, is I don't drive very often to know. But I think from a broadcasting point of view, whoa! As oh. Nick does go into the pits there, hopefully that was on purpose and he did just overshoot. But the problem is, is, is it's one of them talking a good game and doing it, you know. And, and I think it's just about lines. We sit and we watch different rates of I rating, right? We we can watch 7K one week in the Clio's and then we can watch him in the SR10 and then we can watch 500 run something and you know when we get that big broad spectrum of where you can see the difference in what they're doing and some of it is brake pressure some of it is lines but lines is the biggest thing and if you're gonna tighten your line when you can run out another four foot to the left you're gonna lose time every single every single lap yeah, it's conservation of momentum. That is something that I think early on in your iRacing career, you have to learn and you have to know. You have to just be comfortable letting the car carry pace forward and knowing what you can do and what you can't. And 
Unfortunately, I think some of it is uh, Marion Barbaru there finding that brake pressure, that you know comfort of what the car can let you get away with and what it won't. In that instance, the car's not going to let you brake and hook it as hard as you want. You've got to run it wide. Yeah, but, but, um, he also had the leader behind him, so Barbaru was coming out of that corner and taking a sharp exit to the the other side to get out the way for Mackenzie Rune, who, who has opened it up, you know, a 5.5 second gap at the moment. Ian Lance again coming up now. He's got Jack Clark in front of him. In Jack from, Jack from the Intense Sim Racing. Lance there from Loomis e Motorsports. Is he going to tuck up the inside? He's not, but Jack's got his exit entry wrong. Ian Lance can let it run a little bit now. Is he going to be able to get him on the run down? Coming out of two, down into three and four. He's not going to make it this time. It's going to be bravery on the exit. Who's going to be the bravest one? Who's going to get the power down? Is it going to come round the very fast right-hander a turn five through? The left-hander a six. On the brakes they go. And these two carrying on with this battle. Lance is looking a little bit more quicker, but has also been a bit more masterful in his own downfall. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's very it's interesting to me how spread out the field is and then how there's just these moments of battles developing just due to the difference of pace between drivers as we watch here marshall's just now coming out of the pits too so i don't know what was up with marshall going in the pits there as he did he's just now coming out he's gonna be way off the pace but other than this battle here p789 you know, a lot of people are spread out here we're at 15 to 35 so we have 20 to go now how will Magnuson use the slipstream here to try to get past uh, Clark and Lance is my question, if he can use slipstream at all. Because as we run down here, you see everyone kind of settling in. Nobody's looking for a ballsy pass into the wall of champions. And everyone seems to get through there okay, as far as I can see. But again, you've still got more distance you can run to the outside. Yeah, we've got three rounds to go. Don't forget on April 6th. Um, we're off to the Japanese Grand Prix for Suzuka International. Then we go on the 20th, we go for the Italian Grand Prix. We're heading to the home of Italian motorsport is Monza. Then on the 27th of April is the Dutch Grand Prix from Circuit Park Zamfort. That's going to be one of the interesting ones to see how they get on. Magnussen is now starting to close up on Jack Clark as well. And as you say, these, bat these battles are spread that you are right when you say they are spread out but then we have this moment of fireworks it, it kind of goes poof bang and then just as quick it's over again yeah it's very i don't know and i this is kind of the issue with canada is that canada is a track there's not a lot to it. There's a couple of chicanes and then just a couple of straightaways. There's not anything that provides any sort of big challenge, big action other than the chicanes. And essentially what the track is, when you look at it on a track map, it's one, two, three, four chicanes and two hairpins. It, it doesn't sound so hard when you say it like that. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? No, but I can tell you what, it is blinking tough because I... I love Canada. This is up there. Um, don't get me wrong. It's not up there with Interlagos. That's my all time. It's never going to happen. I love Interlagos and that's the end of it. But Canada is, is a great circuit to go racing if you've got the right car combo. And the Super Formula Lights of Canada should be the ideal mix. You should see some great action, great battling, great everything. And I think, you know, it's just a shame. I would love to be able to look at this and say, we've got the 30 car grid that I formula so deserve. It's well run. It's a great, great league for anybody that wants to get involved. And if you do want to get involved and you are at home, then please do. You've got obviously all links down in the description below so you can get yourself involved in that one. It is an, a great league to be a part of. You know, just need some more people to come and join in with this action as we've lost two cars unfortunately leaving us with 12 on track marion barbaru is the last runner magnuson has just left the pit lane and he has done something to himself unfortunately for magnuson he's going too hot here he's going to miss that completely and if you put new tires on sir you ain't doing that uh and that's 
that's the thing. You've got to let those tires warm up. You've got to be nice to them. And it's very hard to do that through the first couple sectors here yeah. in Canada. And be nice to the to the tires, get them warmed up, and have them ready to go. Uh, Barbaro here is down in P12. You can see eight seconds ahead, a significant gap behind. Just kind of running Barbaro, running their own race. Not a lot to really write home about right now as they come out through turn 10 here into turn 11. Uh, just got to keep it moving. Keep it moving, keep it grooving, and run your own race. We're halfway through now, James. And, I mean, it's a very, very spread out field. Yeah, it is, and I'm sure that we're going to be hopefully coming back in and out when we've got back to the pit stops. Alexander Shana from the Loomis uh, E Motorsports team, one of the bosses here at iFormula, is out on track. He's the, the first of the pitters. So Shana is the first one. Oh, there you go. Come on, there we go. The first one who has pitted here. Everybody else in front, Hitchcliffe has not. Clark has not. Lance and Jimenez have not. So they've all got stops. Now, based off Shana's pit lane time only, is 36.08 seconds, which does roughly accumulate into, depending on the lost time of the car behind, it's not a true 36 second lost time. That obviously counts for the pit entry and the pit exit. And if Rachel Jimenez goes into the pits a lot quicker than Shana, she can bring that pit lane right down, even though they could have the same pit stop time. So it's all about pit entry and exit and making sure you don't overshoot your box and getting that car nailed between them, them gaps, between them engineers to be able to do the work on you. Yeah, I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about corner exits, corner entries. It's all about being brave. You've just got to be a little bit brave, especially when it comes to pit lane. And I think one of the things, too, this goes back again to our conversation about game versus sim, is a lot of drivers don't practice pit stops. They don't prep for pit stops. They don't think about pit stops as much. And it's something that you really, really have to practice and get used to. You've got to do the timeout and then pit and know how your car is going to react. Know when you need to hit the brakes to stop in your pit box. And it's something that I find some drivers lack on. And sometimes it just catches them off guard because it tends to be the least practiced part of a race, in my opinion. It's never practiced. Not from your casual individual in the moment. You've never, it's never practiced in the way that you would hope that it would be. And, you know, if you talk to a driver and say, did you practice pit entry and pit exit, you can guarantee to a degree that there isn't going to be many that are going to turn around and go, yes, sir, I did. Because Marion Barber is the only one we ever see who generally will practice um, starting off his pit box, you know. And that's the thing. You, there's only certain people that do that as well as doing anything else so yeah it, they're not aspects that people do generally go and do as Alex Hinchcliffe has now gone into the pits um, for Shana he's going to come down the back straight Hinchcliffe is not even stopped yet so should be Shana going through here comes Hinchcliffe towards us and then you've got Shana is just about coming through the wall of champions on the left hand side you can just see him coming into shot now he has just gone through and will Hitchcliffe get out anywhere near him? No. So Shana has gained one place. He should get Jack Lance, Jack Clark, sorry, and Ian Lance, possibly for Shana. But that's going to be very, very close for him. Yeah, it's going to be extremely close. It's not undoable, though, at, or it's not unimaginable to see that he gets that through, though, if he can keep trying to find some time, but the gap is opening up. Magnuson coming out right behind Hinchcliffe here, and this is going to be a very, very close battle here as we head through the first sector, and we hit turn six now, and head into six and seven, and at this point, Magnuson needs to find a way through, otherwise Magnuson is being held up pretty significantly by Hinchcliffe. The problem is, is that Hinchcliffe's just come out and the pits, and come out right in front of Magnuson, who pitted three laps earlier, and I think possible that it... Oh! What's that? I don't know, but whatever that was, has crashed Hinchcliffe, and it almost killed Magnuson. Let's see here what happens. They go... I think both of them just misjudged it. I don't think there was contact. 
there definitely was not contact, but there was damage on the front of Magnussen's car, which is a little bit bizarre. We'll go this side. There's the damage. The wheel wobbled, and, well, we, get, we don't really need to tell you what that was there, Brad, because there was a gap between the two machines. Yeah, we... Again, it's kind of the unfortunate thing with iRacing, and again, it's where you have to consider that this is not a full-fledged simulator, and there is a little bit of the game aspect in there. Is there's a little bit of the prediction code and software and net code that comes into play, and it really stinks that it happens, but it is something that you have to kind of be aware and be prepared for. And unfortunately, that was just two drivers very close together who have now become damage to Magnuson. Well, oh no, no he's not. I'm sure he had a very wobbly tire. Oh. Or did, did I? No. I thought he did too. Oh. Okay. Oh. But it wasn't just me. Um, Rachel Jimenez is going to come in. It's about where Shana is going to end up here. Go Shana. Oh, he's round, coming around turn 11 on that run. Up droit to Casino. Don't know if he's going to get not going to clear Rachel, definitely. She's on her way out now, but is he going to clear Jack Clark? I don't even know if he's going to do that. Yeah, I don't I don't think so, honestly. Because oh, Jack's on Clark's his way down, out. Clark's rolling. Yeah, no, I don't think. I don't think so. No, Jack's at the bottom of your screen. It looks like he is going to come out in front of Shana. Now, the question is for Jack is give them ties a minute. Don't go and pressure them. Don't put them under pressure. Because, trust me, they're not going to like you very much if you do that. And you're going to find yourself in deep trouble. Give them a minute to warm up and get them up into temperature first. Let's check in with our resident Australian. One, Mr. Scott Ryan, who is down in the bottom left hand side of your screen there. Give us a nice little camera feed of himself sitting in his rig. Nice little triple monitor set up with lots of fancy buttons pushing everywhere there for Scott, so that's quite nice. Um, as you can see on in his front, he's, looks like he's got quite an intense setup there as Mr. Scott Party. Yeah, he's got a pretty professional little setup going there. Honestly, the triple monitors, the wheel looks like a Moza wheel. I could be wrong, actually. Um, I'd have to ask, he's got the, is that, it's either a stream deck or an emergency stop button there on the left, but this is someone who's put a lot of time and a lot of dedication into sim racing that has such a such an intense setup and i like it but it i like it i like but it. i want it it does look rather nice i don't know if i can handle all the pretty buttons going off though it, lots of colors happening i know i do wonder what is that down to the left hand side that's his ear count and then he's gonna go down and you see it moving there with him He's just got that all wrong now, unfortunately. Yeah, I know, Scott, I know, as he waves his hands frantically at the screen there to whoever was in front of Scott at that moment in time. However, if that is a bat marker in front of him now, I do physically understand why he's just waved his hands at Nicholas Marshall quite frantically. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Scott should have been through on Nicholas. We've gone back here quite a little while just to see how this one come about. And I think we can safely say Scott has caught Nicholas where probably Nicholas should have inadvertently removed himself from this equation, I think, here, Brad. And that could be why we have the hand waving at that moment in time from Scott if this has gone on with a bat marker that probably shouldn't have been in the scenario. You know, James, we had been in the yesterday, and we went the whole broadcast without a single conversation about blue flags. And I was wondering when we were going to start talking blue flags again. But no, yes, look. Back markers. I'm looking. I'm listening. He closed up. He got us straight. They're just about to be lapped. No point giving him any competition. Let him go past you and let him go through because you're, you are literally holding up somebody who is trying to get onto the back. There's no point being there. None. None whatsoever. That's a remove. Remove, remove, 
removed. Scott's gone into the pits and Nicholas Marshall, funny enough, was still in front of Scott when he entered into the pit lane. So, I'm sorry, dear sir, there, but you, you might need to... Shut up, James. Come on, listen. Well, and I will say, too, as a driver, you kind of just have to have that awareness. And if you're Nicholas Marshall, you know, you're MP13, and even your fastest lap was still two seconds slower than Scott Barton's fastest lap. So what what's the point of fighting the guy in P2 who's trying to run for the win? And I, yeah, shut up, Brad. I, I, it, <laughs> this is the thing. It gets so frustrating that... You almost need to say to people in Super Formulas and in F3 or W13s or anything open wheel based, in open wheel, you'll need to run the blue flag scenario of get yourself out of the way at the earliest convenient or just remove yourself in general. Because I, I think that's the problem. You know, you, you've got to run on super formulas as if you would run F1 rules. Run the F1 rules in, in the mall. Get out of the way, move, and allow them through as soon as they're within a second or a half second of you. And that isn't done often enough, I think, in open wheel leagues within iRacing because they still take this iRacing rule of you must facilitate. People don't even know what facilitate means. <laughs> not even a word that they can even comprehend could be a definition of something that they know. Just say, guys, in leagues, you can make up your own league that does stay. Get yourself out of the equation as soon as physically possible, because you need to, especially in open wheeled machines it's got to be done in open wheels get out of the way because as we've seen with nicholas marshall it was literally a whole lap and still was involved in that shouldn't have been there yeah and my thing is too as a driver you know for the driver's mindset what are you what are you getting out of fighting the guy in p2 when you're the guy in p13 you're doing nothing but just compromising someone else's race and just making yourself public enemy number one. And the thing is, you know, if you, here's the thing, in a league race, you're not gonna see anyone re retaliate or do anything crazy. If you're in a public lobby and you're the guy in P13 blocking the guy in P2 in a 14 bar lobby, the guy in P2 has half the mind to put you in the wall in a public lobby. That's just, that's what they do. And then you're gonna say, oh, well, you intentionally wrecked me. Okay, well, you held me up for 10 laps. So what was the point of you being there? And, and, and this I'm not is... saying anyone, Problem. I'm not saying anyone in this league is going to do that, but I'm just saying that's the mindset of, you know, these drivers aren't only racing on Sundays here in this league. They're racing other races through the week, and if they're doing that in this league, they're doing that through the week, too. Mm. And I have to wonder if that incident's ever happened to them, and they go, okay, well, what happened? Well, you know, did you look in the mirror and decide, hey, I was in the way it shouldn't have been? That's the thing, and the blue flag's here for 3.16 within the I formula. If you receive a blue flag during qualifying or race session, you should take the sort of reasonable care to not impede drivers on the lead or hot lap. Avoid slowing down during corners or in the racing line. Keep your speed up and allow passing on straights, which we clearly did not see. If possible, drivers overtaking can make their intentions known through voice chat or I racing messages commands, e.g. pass left. Drivers should... Drivers being overtaking can also make their intentions known for the same methods. Well, clearly, we didn't see the overtaking on the straight. We saw a very unhappy Scott Pye wave his hand around frantically in his machine that we did have a camera feed to at that specific moment. And, well, they didn't do... It wasn't... Either of it wasn't done. Um, whether or not Scotty told Nicholas that he was there, whether or not Nicholas paid any a bit of attention that he was there because he didn't allow him to go through and by the looks of it didn't allow him for another lap to go through as your leader robert ridgeway is in the pits and the only reason he is in the pits is mackenzie rune has just got past him there once again so um yeah nice interesting 
evening of racing. He did clear Nicholas Marshall, and this is the moment he goes through on Robert Ridgway to retake that lead. It's where is Scott in conjunction to Robert? He has gone through. Victor Solano, Robert is now on the exit. This could be a tight one as they're coming out together. Ridgway just coming out. He's just coming out, just made it from Noxy Motorsport in front of Victor Solano from Intense Sim Racing. Yeah, but the question is, is Victor Solano going to be able to get past there? Ridgeway has cold tires. Ridgeway is fresh out of the pit. So Ridgeway needs a couple, needs about half a lap at least really here to warm the tires up and get going. So this is going to stay very close as they head up into this middle part of the track. And at the top half, the quote-unquote weird quarter back stretch thing, I don't really know what to call it, with another chicane coming up. Does Victor Solano decide to dive here? It doesn't look like it. It's just going to stay right on the back. I think a dive into the hairpin is going to be his best shot. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, let him get around the hairpin and do him on the straight down in the 13. You're going to carry too much. Your draft is going to be a lot stronger. You're, you know, obviously from Solano's point of view, he hasn't done well with the 13, 14 this race. He, you know, we've seen a couple of hops give the jumps over the curves, but I think if he's going to use it, he's got to use it to his, um, come on once. He's got to use it now to his power. He didn't quite get the exit out. And unfortunately, he's not going to get the run, but can he get a smoother run out? Oh, he can now. Oh. Ridgeway's just got and punched the wall. Ridgeway's just got and punched the wall. Magnuson's trying to remove himself. There, well done, Eric Magnuson. You got out of the way and did a good job and allowed him through on the straight. And these guys can resume their battle. But Robert Ridgeway, again, Wall of Champions claiming somebody. And it was Robert Ridgeway. The only good thing is it was not a permanent damage. Yeah, it's very shocking to me that none of these drivers have absolutely lost themselves on the Wall of Champions. I've been really expecting to see some sort of a big moment there on that wall. And thankfully, nobody's done that yet. Uh, we've seen several, several flirts with the wall. But I've been really waiting on someone to just miscalculate it. Because uh, we all know I would. And um, yeah, there's a reason that I commentate. Because uh, me and the Wall of Champions are not good friends here in Canada. Absolutely. Some people just can't get on with it. It's, it is different from most circuits. You know, it's a hybrid road. It's a hybrid purpose and road circuit. That's the problem. It's not a road. It's not a, it's not a street circuit. It's not a Grand Prix circuit as such. It's a hybrid of them in conjunction. It's a street Grand Prix circuit almost because it brings a bit of mixture of everything here. It really does, and again, you know, when you look at the track map, you're like, oh, it's a few chicanes, a couple of hairpins, it's kind of simple, but it's really not, it's really not that simple of a track to handle and do well at, and, you know, I have to say kudos to the drivers for doing so well as they're doing. Ridgeway here is doing a very good job at keeping at the back of Solano, and even with dirty air through all of these tight, twisty bits and corners, he's staying right on the back and actually gaining a little bit of pace, maybe. He'll be able to facilitate a pass soon, but it, I mean, we'll see eventually if he can make this pass happen. Can he get back at it? That's going to be the question. Is he going to be able to? Um, as you see, Solano to the right hand side of the circuit there. I don't really feel you need to be much defending at that point. Probably going to let that car run out a little bit more. Solano's got a different exit to Ridgeway. Ridgeway looks a little bit more conventional through turns eight and nine on the run down into turn 10. The hairpin at the bottom onto the brakes he goes. Is this gonna be where he's gonna be able to close it up again? Let it run out to the wall. There you go. Now get the power on and he's now on his bike once more. Shifting frantically is Robert Ridgway and he's gonna try and get up onto the back end of, of Victor Solano very, very shortly. So. This battle could resume as we're coming into the final five. Yeah, you can see Solano there doing a little bit of weaving on the straight. Nothing crazy, but just a little over, a little back, trying to break the slipstream as much as possible. You can see, especially there through the final chicane at the Wall of Champions, that's where Ridgeway is closing the gap. He's doing very well to close the gap onto the start-finish straight. 
but then is losing time through some of the corners and it's kind of ebb and flowing in and out a little bit. And, you know, last lap, he was actually faster by four tenths of a second just based on that exit of the wall of champions. So he's got pace. He just needs to convert. And it's one thing to catch. It's another to pass. But I think Ridgeway, if he can get close enough coming out of that turn 10 hairpin, going down that back main side straight area, I think he can make this pass out. Five to go now. Brad's description of the droid, the casino. Uh, back straight main bit area there. The straighty bit yeah, that before thing, they know. get to 13 or 14. Um, the straighty bit before yeah. the <laughs> Oh, dearie me. He's got to get closer, though, because I don't think he's going to make it being eight temps out. He's got to get within two and a half, three temps, I think. Needs to be able to close that up. I think it's too far back, even if he's got, you know, any form of draft assistance. I think he's just too far back here. He's going to get it down to probably round about seven and a half if he's lucky, but he's got to look at getting the ball out of 13 and 14. There we go, seven and a half temps. On he goes, out of that wall again. Solana goes directly to the right, who got a very slow exit. Now you're going to come back. How many moves do we want you to make this? Uh, we want one. And that is from Solano, who's overshot the entry into turn one. It's going to give him a slow exit coming out of two now. He's under pressure here, Solano. How's he going to handle this? Is he going to be as cold as ice, or is he going to crack like a peanut? Well, and I think Solano understands where he's at right now. We're four laps to go. Solano knows that at this point, the goal is to just hold the position. It doesn't need to do anything risky. Just needs to hold and keep consistent against Ridgeway. They're similar in pace. They're similar in skill. And so these are two very well-skilled drivers. The big difference is Ridgeway's down two places on the day, and Solano is up two places on the day. So really expects Ridgeway to be the one that has to make the riskier move, has to make the more decisive move to get the pass done. And also, Ridgeway is the car behind, so it does make sense in that regard. But I don't... I, Ridgeway just isn't converting at the right spot. Getting a good exit out of the, the turns 13 and 14 is great. He's not hitting the hairpin. He's not getting turn 10 done. And that is where his biggest problem is right now. He's a little bit closer now because Solano messed up turn one three quarters of a lap ago. He's got to do more to get moving faster. Yeah, you can see Ridgeway took sector one, Solano took sector two, but that was due to the fact that Ridgeway bounced the curb coming out of eight and nine and was definitely slower there. Who's going to get it coming over the line? It is Ridgeway again. Ridgeway did the fastest, 37174 of anyone. He looks quick through here, but he loses it through sectors two and he loses everything he built up over the first half in the second sector and it was coming in through not three and four he lost a bit of time through three and four but it was coming through six seven eight and nine where the main problem was when we go left right down the straight right left onto the another um straight on the run down into turn 10. you can see he's got it solano got sector one that time but ridgeway's now got to be looking at coming in as we've got three laps to go here be very very interesting free laps yeah solano and ridgeway is going to be the close this is the close battle mckenzie runes ran away scott barton's ran away these two are very very close together and they have nobody behind them for quite a while colise is a third of a lap back it's a full sector off right now but you can see there on the lap times it has been solano that's been slightly slower each time against ridgeway Ridgeway is slowly finding the pace, but just isn't capitalizing. As we go down this straight here, the casino straight, and who comes out? Are, where are they going to be with the Wall of Champions? And also watch yourself with uh, Mr. Nicholas Marshall in the way. Nicholas Marshall, get out of the way, would also be what I would be now. yelling over the radio right now. If now, I now, Roger Ridgeway's got the run out of 13. He's now looking at going up the inside. As Solano goes in deep, he's going to stop. Ridgeway gives him... Go oh, blimey, dear sir. You gave him an absolute <laughs> bucket a load of room. No squeezing on the exit, nothing. He just gave him an absolute weld to allow him to take retake that. God, I would have squeezed him like an orange at that point. I can tell you that much. Uh, put pressure on him on the exit out of one and uh, give him something really to think about here. Nicholas Marshall, dear sir, right now you should be on the left. You should be lifting. See, 
this is going to be Ridgeway's moment. If Ridgeway is going to get a good chance to get around Solano, it's going to be with the help of lap traffic here mm -hmm. in the uh, form of Nicholas Marshall, who is in the middle of the straightaway right now, which is an interesting place to be, considering you have the battle for the last of the podium, come podium on, places. Come on, come right on. You? Yeah, get... Mm, allow them for... Solano's trying to use them for slipstream. But he's going to. The question is, is whether or not he's going to stay there. You've, you, you've, you've put the leaders the wrong way, and this is... Right, uh, Ridgeway did manage to watch. clear him coming now watch in. Ridgeway. Yeah, he gets a run. This is the problem. Solano tries to do the right thing, get there. Ridgeway just cannot quite get there. We're on lap 34. The leader is on his way round from five to six. He's coming round to lap seventh place. Jack Clark at the moment. Ridgeway and Solano really now have, have not got much. If you know, you ever want to quote somebody in your head, Robert, it is right about now where you turn around and say, you've been given an opportunity, are you going to capture it or are you going to let it slip, dear sir? You've been there, you've had a taste, you've had a little nibble. Now you know I need to go and take the whole thing. You need to go and take that chunk, that bite, that munch that you've been craving over the last five laps. So it's all on what Ridgeway's going to be able to do as we're going to be coming on to the final lap. This time around, as these guys head through turn eight and nine, before they start getting down into turn 10. Bridgeway has two more opportunities in my head to get this pass done. It's yep. going to be down the main straight, and then it's the last time they come through the hairpin. Those are the last two chances that he has here. Ian Lance is now out of the race. We'll pick up what happened to him in just a little bit because right now Ridgeway Solano are battling for P3 as we go down and you can see Solano again getting very very cheeky doing everything Solano can to try to break slipstream that hanging to the right comes back to the left is gonna just dip out a little he's not doing full swerves but just enough out and back that uh, Ridgeway has to think about it and break slipstream here we go to the wall of champions where Ridgeway has been faster but Ridgeway not able to capitalize this time by down the main straight across the start and finish line white flag is out James and Ridgeway has maybe two more chances yeah this is it there you've got the door you've got the door he gave him that chance Solano was his master of his own downfall oh. coming out of one he ran that deep line for the last four laps and it worked. He ran the deep line on the last lap and it did not work for Victor Solano. He has overshot the exit coming out of two. And unfortunately for him, he has now lost time. It's now on him to get up behind Ridgeway. We know Solano can make this middle sector work for him. This is where Ridgeway seems to be at his most vulnerable. The leader's on his way round 10. Scott Barton in second is on his way round from nine down to 10. These guys are on the run down now from nine to 10. It's all about this one moment for Robert Ridgeway. Is he gonna be able to hold this line? He's got Solano right up him. He literally backed him up and put him in there and made it as hard as he can. Now go and hug that inside line tighter than my door, hugging a teddy. Keep it there, Robert. I didn't say weave my jumper on the way down like me nan does. Come on, son. Hug the inside. <laughs> now go to the outside. Now hit the run and contact. Solano's gone. There is no way he's going to be able to take that. You are going to have a slowdown. You might as well stop. You're going to get yourself 40 seconds anyway. Oh, that was not how that should have ended. Oh. oh man, I Solano. He was right there, and then wheel to wheel contact right before the wall. Ah, oh. I'm gonna imagine this is what happened to Ian Lance yeah, at the start of the final it. lap. Yeah, he just went round. Unfortunately, okay. Alex Hitchcliffe went off oh. off as well. He's come down into turn one. This was on the final lap of the race. I've got a funny feeling he's done what so many others have done. And okay. it was now Barbaru got past Shana coming down to the end. And here comes Robert Ridgway and Ian Lance. This is where this happened. See, Ridgway is in front. He's weaving. Then he's going to come out to the side. He's going to go left and then bang. Now, the, the thing is, Solano needs to stop. Oh, 
and Solano slowed down just enough so that the position was barely given back to Ridgeway. It, well, it wasn't the fact of that. He would have had a massive slowdown coming out at the end of it as well, to be blatantly honest. Yeah. Let's see if he did get it off before the end. And it's Mackenzie Rune, your winner, with Scott Barton in second. Robert Ridgway in third. He did not get it off. Adrian Colisey took fourth. Oh. Rachel Jimenez took fifth. Then Solano finished down in sixth ahead of Jack Clark. And then we've got the lap runners, Marion Barbaru, Alexander Shana, Eric Magnus. <laughs> Eric Magnuson, apologies for that one. Alex Hinchcliffe, Nicholas Marshall, Ian Lance, and then Timothy Nelson there as well. Um, wow. Uh, wow. I, mm. Yeah, I don't know what you... I don't know. I don't know we, what else you say to that. Yeah, I, I think it was a great ending. Um, it just unfortunate the way it ended. But I can tell you what we are going to do. We're going to have a chat with one Mr. Scotty Barton, who is our camera poster pinup boy here on the JPB YouTube channel. Scotty, how are you, buddy? Oh, tired, boys, tired, as always. Oh, man. Early mornings are killers, but we do what we have to do. Yeah, dude, I, I, it's been a fun one for you. You had a bit of a rough start, though, Scotty, losing two places before you'd even got round turn two. Yeah, just keep it easy, man. Just got to survive to win it, so <clears throat> just played it safe. I love how you come back with that. Most people would have gone, yeah, I got a really bad start, and I sucked getting it off the line. You just go, yeah, I was just keeping it safe, wasn't I? You know what I mean? It was all well, good. Well, you you got to. It's the only way you can win it. <laughs> yeah, well, you kept it safe behind Nicholas Marshall at one point as well, Scotty. Well, I, yeah, it's a bit close. He, I didn't expect him to break so early there and touched him and forced me in to take the fast repair because I was starting to lose a bit of time on the front splitter being lost, but yeah, it happens. Did you think he should have removed himself from the equation? Oh, most people would do it a little bit earlier, but yeah, each to their own. He's racing, so he's got the right to. I'm not yeah. complaining. Yeah, well, at that moment, unfortunately, Scotty, for you, we were on you with your camera, so we did see your viable hand gesture go up at the screen there at the moment that you exited. Um, <laughs> that's that's why I asked how you truly felt, Scotty, although you're being wonderfully diplomatic. Oh, it, it was more me. The hand gesture was more me going, oh, I should have just taken a little bit easier, but... Mm, see, know. I was the other way. Nice but then you know how I get on blue flags, Scotty, unfortunately. I, I think he should have lifted and allowed you for ages ago. He wasn't racing anyone, but that was just me. Anyway, yeah. for you, dear yeah, sir, so, but... it is what it is, isn't it? Let's, let's be real. Going yeah. forward, though, Scotty, how do you feel about the last three races? Oh, well, I, I've got the Formula Racing Group Pro Series in Australia I've been concentrating on, so I don't have the seat time I used to. So I'm struggling a little bit to keep the pace there, but... Hey, a couple more rounds to go. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, you've got Suzuka, uh, Monza and Zanvort. Anyone you think you're going to do better at than some of the others? Oh, Zanvort. All day? Yeah, I like Zanvort. Oh, yeah. mate. Well, good luck there, Scotty. We'll Anyone you want go. to shout out before we let you go? <laughs> yeah, now you said that. You'll end up in the uh, ball, wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Come on. Hey, man, hey mate, you, you said it. You said it, not me. <laughs> um, Anyone you want to shout out, Scotty, before we let you go, buddy? Uh, all the boys at Valve Esports, um, RSW Graphics for his awesome graphics as always. Uh, everything simulated here in Australia, they look after us. So, yeah, got to give a shout out to Robbie Widgeway. Give me some pointers in the setups when he puts them up and makes me rethink about how I'm doing my setup. So, yeah, we'll give him a shout out too. Uh, awesome stuff, mate. Well, you take care, buddy, and um, I'll catch up with you soon, no doubt. Thanks, boys. Take care, mate. And that was our resident um, post of pinup bay man there as well. I want to catch up with this man um, before I go and talk to Mackenzie Rune. I want to have a chat with Mr. Robert Ridgway, who was involved in probably the most intense battle throughout this race. It came down to the last lap, to the last corner, and then contact happened with Victor Solano. But let's find out. From his take, where it came from. Robert, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing very well, mate. I'm doing very well. Um, a bit of an intense battle for you coming towards that last half of the race. <laughs> yeah, I'm all bloodied up on the podium. <laughs> I bet you are, mate. <laughs> I bet you are. How, um, come on and tell us about it. What was it like out there on the, on the circuit, first of all? 
Well, another quick victory is he got he got past me and then had a couple opportunities. It was hard to close it, and then I finally got it. There at the end was tough because I'm defending, and then I just tried to give him just enough room. And, uh, I don't know. I'll call it a racing incident. Maybe 60-40 my fault, but it was a, that was a tough spot. And then hopefully they take the slowdown away from him. He got, he got P4 for that. Yeah, but you... That's unfortunately in game, isn't it? And that's not anything to do with the people outside of that. So I'm not quite sure if they will influence it there as well. You, do you think though the contact was based on you moving over on him? Because let's be real, we didn't really have a lot of places to go once he was on that outside line. Yeah, I was just trying to take pretty much ownership of that corner, and then uh, you know I'm coming left. He's 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 got maybe a couple wheels worth of room to the left. But I can't really see him in the moment, so I, I don't know. That was one of those I got. I look back at it, and I'm. It's like ah, I should have kept it a little tighter. Um, if I was him, I would have been maybe a little more conservative. I would have tried to get the run on me because he he could have got a better exit and maybe ran it to the line. But that's a tough spot. Well, for me, unfortunately, it didn't look like. Um taking the racing line, he had the pace. Basically, every time he come out through thirteen and fourteen, you looked like you could get him down into one every single time. So I don't know if he didn't know if he was going to have that confidence, that pace there. We literally are just watching it now. We watched how you got the hairpin and you just packed him right up coming through the hairpin at 10 before you went off like an absolutely jet rocket up that Drake the Casino run into 13 and 14. Was there a game, game plan going into 10? Did you intend to have him that close? Oh, not at all. Man. I was just trying to hold on to it the best I could. Yeah, uh, well, you, you did do a great job there, buddy, keeping it back. And, and either way, uh, I, I think it was great racing. Um, how it goes from there, I have no idea, to be honest with you, Robert. But look, thanks so much for joining us in the booth. Is there anyone you want to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Yeah, I got a shout-out, Victor. It was a great battle. I think, you know, you take a lap away, you add a lap, either one of us takes it, you know. I think it was just a matter of position at the, for that last corner. And, uh, man, shout out to you guys and shout out to, uh, you know, the league and everybody else. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been an awesome time this race as well. So, Robert, thank you so much for joining us there, buddy. And we'll catch up with you soon, no doubt. All right. Deuces. Take care. Oh, Brad. Oh, oh I could have given him a little bit more room. 60-40 his fault. 60-40 uh, Ridgeway's fault. I, I don't really know. I'm gonna, I, I just want to have a quick look beforehand on this because we are literally at the point of it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Difficult one. Let's catch up with the man who just literally went on a Sunday drive here, did Mackenzie Rooney, just got off at the start, went off like an absolute rocket, didn't look back, Took the race win, because why not, right? When you're so far ahead and you go and win it by about 17 seconds. Let's see how he got on, thinking about whether or not what he was doing later for shopping. Mackenzie, welcome into the booth, Billy. How are you? Hey, guys. Doing good. Good race for you? Yeah. Um, I managed to mitigate uh, and you know keep my mistakes down to a minimum, which is pretty rare for me, so... Yeah, it felt good up, up up there. A little lonely, you know, pretty much just a uh, hot lap. And like, uh, I think Scott was kind of in the same boat. But a lot of fun overall. This track's a, a blast to drive. You know, you're always on the edge and two inches from the wall. Yeah, you you, you were. What do you do, Mackenzie, while you're out in front and you're, you're winning by this amount of time? Do you, you know, for me, I'd probably end up putting myself in a wall because I'd think about what I'm shopping or what the wife wants to add to me, ever growing job list that I never quite get through before she adds another one. Um, you know, what do you do while you're out in front this far? Uh, yeah, great question. I try to keep it as mechanical as possible. So, you know, every apex I'm looking at and then I'm looking at the next apex and the wall and, and I just rinse and repeat. Um, I keep my brain focused. Um, and then, you know, you throw in the... When should I pit and uh, how much fuel should I take? Things like that. Uh, but yeah, I just try to keep my brain active all, all race long. See, that's where I may fail, Mackenzie. My brain doesn't stay active enough for my concentration level, I think. Um, there, so well, st Staring at the relative uh, the entire race always keeps you busy with, with Scott right there.
Yeah, Scotty, Scotty was doing rather well. He, he did have a bit of, bit of a moment with a bat marker that um, did bring some conversations up here in the booth. Of course, for you, though, championship standings, you, you know, nice little gain on Christian. He's not here. Should put you up in the front of him going into the final three rounds. Do you think he's still up for grabs? Yeah, depending on how the points shake out. I know Christian's super fast. It's a shame he couldn't be here. But, um, I mean, absolutely planning on being right up there up front battling for the for the win uh, in the last few races. Yeah, well, good luck to you, dear sir. Hopefully it goes well and we'll catch you back in Japan, where we're heading next off to Suzuka. Anyone you want to shout out before I let you go, though, buddy? Hey, a uh, huge shout out to Jack Clark for uh, providing the setup for, for us guys. It was a great setup and, you know, came in at the last minute. So thanks a lot. Awesome stuff, Mackenzie. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. And I um, look forward to seeing you probably later on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Take care. Well, there you go, Brad. Three happy drivers. I don't think there was anybody that wasn't happy. Um, Scotty tried to turn around and said that he was more waving at himself, which clearly was not <laughs> the case, Scotty Barton. I don't care what you say. You definitely were not waving at yourself. The frustration did kick in for Scotty at that point. Uh, you mean to tell me a driver wasn't waving at the back marker and was waving and talking to himself? No, James. Surely there wasn't any frustrations from Scotty in front of him when he got held up going into a chicane when he was battling away in second place there by a back marker. Never. Who said, Never. Of course he didn't. He wasn't <laughs> waving at it. He was just letting him say hi out the window. Well, him and Ezzy, YouTube chat, great race, Rachel. Yep, did really well. Finished sixth over the wall up two places uh doodly doodle and mckenzie 100 yeah he did go out and absolutely dominate in that one as well but brad i think that's gonna wrap it up final words from you yeah i think canada was fun i i'm really loving the transition to the uh, sfls from the f3s and we've only got three more races left this season and nobody's buttoned up the championship yet so i'm kind of excited to see how things go moving forward yeah, I fully agree. Don't forget, guys, coming up later on, we have got the IGP also in the Super Formula Lights um, as well. Later on for you, we're going live at about 9.15. Where are we now? Clock's gone forward, BST. So have a look on the upcoming YouTube channel. We're at Road Atlanta. And if it's anything like last time out where they had 60 cars in the rain, um, you might want to join us for that one. And come and enjoy that one. But uh, for now, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. It's been a pleasure being alongside Brad, as always is. Great broadcast. Thank you, guys. No worries. Well, it's been a pleasure bringing you all the action. But for now, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I've been James Parvey. I've been alongside Bradley Dalton. And as always, from us up here in the JBB booth, take care. Have a great week. And you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good night.